Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Shaper Sessions. Tonight, we are joined by my friend Goose, and we're going to cover logo design and Shaper Assist and how essentially to become going from your first time using Origin and being confident in making a cool logo to make either a maker's mark or just something to put up in your shop. And yeah, start with a quick sketch. If I'm using Shaper Assist, I just want to kind of get the general idea across that of what I want, maybe involve any kind of pictures of something that I want, and a quick sketch. As much information as I can give our people if possible is going to help in getting a good result. Before I start this, I want to remind everyone to throw hashtag ShaperMade into the comments. We will be doing giveaways throughout the sessions tonight. And you want to get your name on the wheel. All right. So, my free time, when I'm not here at Shaper, I like to make furniture. Um, so I want something to kind of sell the fact that I make furniture. I'm going to start with a chair. A chair that I made, really simple design, but it has a nice profile. So I think that would make a really good maker's mark. It's essentially the same two bends. Create the seat and the back. And one that splits it right down the middle comes down the front. So we have bent laminated ply on both the seat and the back. We have sheet steel that goes to the middle. I just think that that profile is going to make a really interesting logo. And then you know, I want to include some text maybe in the, in the larger logo. Um, I go by still well crafted. that information in there, and then maybe add the handle as well. So again, something really simple, but it conveys, it's a eye-catching design that I hope somebody else can do something better with than just this, and so I'm going to rely on Shaper Assist. So I'm going to take this whoosh, into the cloud, it goes, and I hand it over to Shaper Assist. Oh, look at that! Hi everyone, so I'm Eric. I run the Shaper Assist program, and so if anyone has used that, you've been chit-chatting to me. And today we are gonna to build a logo. So a lot of people, when they first start getting Origin, like it's a really high learning curve to learn some type of uh, vector program. So if you just wanna get start cutting and don't wanna to have to bother, to use everything maybe your skills aren't quite there yet and you just need a little assist and see what i did there then you can uh let me know send over what you have what you're thinking just something basic like this and uh then i, I can get to work so i can show you the basics of illustrator so you guys can start learning how to get rocking so you can get in the shop and get cutting because that's really what we all want to do anyways you can see that so on top of this logo that Jake has given me, he's also sent me a profile of the actual chair he's built. So we can open this guy in Adobe Illustrator. And so this is a really big photo. So what we can do is if you right click, you can zoom out, but that gets really tiring. So with a keyboard shortcut is control minus. And okay, so we'll go over the bit of basics of where to start with Illustrator and uh, then we can get cracking. So when this first comes in, it gets dropped into your artboard and this is really big. Uh, I always have my default artboards set up to 36 inches by 36 inches. So whenever something comes in, it gives me just a good perspective so what we can do is we can resize this picture, get it to more manageable size by reaching to the top corner with the direct select. The direct select, the selection tool, sorry, not the direct select, clicks on everything. The direct select clicks on just the individual node. So we want the selection tool. Go to the top corner and drag this down. Now, when you drag it down, it doesn't always stay in perspective. We don't want it all stretched out like that. So if you hold down the shift key, it stays in perspective. And 
then a little fancy move is you hold down the alt key it moves it from the center so that's shift alt slide to make that a little bigger okay now with using illustrator it's always best to use a photo reference so we can just draw on top of this so to make it a little bit easier we can drop the opacity so if you just click on it up at the top let's drop that to about 50 percent and then we want to go over to our layers tool and pro tip always name your layers so let's click right here is the lock button it, i know it's invisible so you don't see it until you click on it but click there and it locks it so now i can't edit this anymore we can turn the layer to picture cool and then let's go to the, down here to the bottom corner of create new layer uh, if any of you want refreshers or additional other tools there's another session that we did a couple weeks ago which is kind of a run through of a lot of different things illustrator did does so if anyone wants refreshers or a little more context you can refer to that illustrator session okay so now that we are on a working plane that doesn't manipulate the picture let's zoom in a little bit that's a beautiful chair jake thanks that's a really good chair so if let's try to trace these elements of the chair that uh jake wants just try to get out the essence of it actually first we have to figure out what two different types of logos we can do so there are two different types if you want to come back to me noah there are two different types of logos either you can do a engraving online like maker's mark or you can do an outline and there are differences in cut but really it's difference in design so like an outline cut is you have the individual shapes and so you want to do an inside cut a pocket cut to cut out these sections but if you want to do an online engraving similar to the uh uh, shaper text then you can do something like this which is online single line which can get you much tighter much closer cuts so if you have online you can do inside cuts but if you have an outline you can't do online if that makes sense so one is more versatile than the other so for this we're going to make both uh, it's always easier to do an online and then we can switch to an outside line than it is to come out with an outside line and turn into an online because there really isn't a good way to reverse that. Okay, so let's go back to our illustrator and then we can go make the online. So first, I always like to get a baseline just to keep everything in line of where we're going cool and then so that brings us to the stroke and the fill so with a line you can double click on the stroke which is the, the outside box turn that to black let's try that again there we go so now we have a black line which is the base so we keep everything in line now let's trace this guy this is going to be the most important one cool so it doesn't have to be perfect with uh logos it's all about getting the essence across and there's a lot of um, distortion in photos in general so if you traced it perfectly it doesn't isn't going to look exactly like the thing you took a picture of because the camera has distortion there's angles there's a lot of different things going on so take note if you are taking a picture of something and then trying to trace it that there's a little bit of differences okay so we got one line in let's follow this let's grab the line tool again so for the line tool you can just click and hold and then that gets us our nice little line we can get it in there and then we can just adjust it a little bit to feel what's right cool I and mean, we're just overshooting everything now and we'll come back later and clean it up 
So zoom out. And then this guy. Cool, let's zoom in a little bit. So that's just, let's, let's up all the stroke weight here so you guys can see this a little better. There we go. Okay, so now we're starting to get these together. So Illustrator as a vectors are, are just lines and dots that connect each other. And so they all interact, but there's a very different selection. So like if we were doing the selection tool, and grabbing this, it grabs the whole thing. But if we want direct select, then we can grab an individual point and move that around. So it definitely takes a lot of practice and muscle memory to figure out what selection tool to use at different times, but uh, practice makes perfect. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, the cool thing about Jake's chair is that there are multiple lines moving in the same direction. Uh, and it's really hard when you have custom lines like this, if you don't know exactly what the degrees are, it's really hard to like just grab another one and make sure that's exactly at 55 degrees. So what we're going to do is do an offset. So we'll take this line, go up to object, path, and then offset path. And then so what that does is make a box around that line with a specific off width. So let's go like uh, 0.25. And then if we turn off the preview and turn it back on, it updates. So we want to get like right in the middle of that piece of wood. Let's go uh, 0.75. And since we're doing a logo, it doesn't really matter. Oh, that's way too big. It doesn't really matter what scale we're working on because we can always resize it later. Uh, you don't want to work too big because it creates a lot of processing power for your computer. And you don't want to make it too small because then it can get really finicky with trying to match things. So a good, like, reasonable size is always good. Let's go 0. 0.5. How's that? Also the Beautiful. benefit of using vectors because the scalability of it. Exactly. And so we can take the same logo and make it super tiny, super big, with no difference. OK, so now we have a box when we really just want two lines. So here, if we take the direct select tool and then zoom in on this box, we can click on just this line. There's no indicator that shows it's just this line, unfortunately. But if we click on it once and delete that, it deletes just this section. If you delete a, hit delete again, it deletes the whole thing. But we don't want to do that. Also, for direct select, if you click it once, it clicks on just this line. If you click it twice, then it highlights more of it. OK, so let's just want to delete that. OK. And then hold down space and click to zoom. Sorry for all the space at the bottom. And then click on this, delete this. And now we have two lines that are the perfect width offset. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do this maneuver. But if at an angle, if you want to create two offset lines, this is the best way. You can move it in one direction, but that does it right left, not perpendicular. And we wanted a perpendicular offset to make sure everything's the same. So, and it looks like this line is parallel with this line. So then let's just take this line, copy it, control C, control V. And here's another thing with Illustrator. When you paste, it always pastes with an offset. It moves it. So it, when two things are on top of each other, they look exactly the same. So whenever you paste, it moves it off. If you want to paste it and leave it exactly where it is. You want it, there's control shift V, and that puts it right on top of it. So it's always confusing when you're first using Illustrator because you don't notice if there's multiple copies of things on top of each other. So let's take this guy, let's put him right there. I can extend that out a little bit. You see, oh, 
Whoa. Oh, that's one. There we go. Extend that out. If you just hold it in place, the snaps will keep it in line for you. Let's have that crossover. And it looks like it's a little off, but again, this is the perspective of the photo. It's not like the actual chair. What's more important is that everything looks cool for the logo. And then let's take another line and let's start right here. Draw that down there. Cool. Now we want to connect all these lines. So what we can do is for this, we want to connect, like say these two lines, because we'll, we'll deal with the curve later, but now we just want to connect them. There is the join key. So if you highlight both of them and click join, it joins the two closest points, but we don't want that at all. So be careful of that. What you want to do is you can, now that you have these lines, you can take them, direct select on the node, bring that down, and then that will snap right to where it says intersect to this line. So that's perfectly on that line. Let's zoom in. You can grab this guy. Perfect. And so now we have two lines. And then if you do direct select, highlight both of them. Control J, which is join, but that's also in uh, let's see, object path join. Join. Now this is one connected path. Perfect. And so we'll deal with the curves a little later, but let's get those all connected first. Let's do the same thing for this guy. Click and drag to right up that intersect. Perfect. Perfect. Highlight control J. And you know it's connected when it has this little dot in the corner. We'll go over that in a second. Cool. And now we're going to use a little bit different technique for the third one. So we could do this again for this corner and this corner, but that's a lot. So what we can do is if we click this, click uh -oh, hold shift to click multiple things shift and then click this we have all four of these you can go into the shape builder so the shape builder combines any pieces together into your own custom shape so we have all these and now that we bring the cursor over it we can see it's grayed out which means this is a single shape we recognize so if we click on it it creates you select it creates one custom shape perfect so now we can just delete all this bam 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 cool 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 oh, nope too much oh we don't want that one we want that one there we go and then we also don't want to cut the bottom so again a which is the keystroke for direct select. And then V is the keystroke for direct se for selection. Adobe could use better words for this that are slightly different from each other. Okay, direct select, delete, and again, three lines. And we need to do the armrest. So if again, we wanna keep them everything nice and parallel, direct select, Click on this line because this is we want everything in line. Control C, Control V. Beautiful armrest. Direct select again. A. Also, if anyone has any questions, please put them in the comments and we'll go over them later. I'm sure there's bound to be plenty, but throw them up there and we'll try to answer them the best we can. Cool. Okay. Now, let's get to making all these 
curves. So remember those little dots in the corner that we saw earlier? If we oh, click on them, we see this little dot. If you click and drag, this is the radius. So you can drag this corner radius to exactly what you want. And it gives you this nice, perfect radius. You can also go into the corner and type it in if you have a specific radius that you want to go to. Say you want to size everything to a quarter inch bit, you can put a 0.125 up here and it will size it perfectly. So that looks pretty good. We can go to this guy, click and drag. Beautiful. Actually, let's go back because we want these to be exactly the same. So we can click this, hold shift, click the other one, and now we can move them both together and get two perfect curves. Awesome. Awesome. And then we do this guy A. Pull that right in line. And if you notice, Jake did a perfect job of bending these so that they fit perfectly with these curves. So good job, Jake. There might have been some trial and error there. <laughs> some. Okay. Now let's go back out. Okay, so now we have the basics of this. And now let's edit. So before we go any farther, let's save this and move to another layer just so we're not being more uh, destructive. We also want to save our work. Actually, let's save this right now. Let's go save as always save your work. Don't get two hours into doing this and then it freezes on you and then you pray that it recovered it because it's good Jake's. And then you want to throw your computer across the room. Save that. OK. Save that. Always save your work. And then Illustrator also auto save as you go sometimes. Uh, but don't rely on that. Always save. OK, let's clean up these lines a little bit. Let's go A. Bring this guy in nice and line. Give a little dimensionality. That's right, we were, we were going to. So now let's move to a different layer. We can go to a selection tool, highlight everything, copy, control C, and then we can lock this layer, make a new layer, control shift V to paste in place. And that puts a new layer right on top of what we're working on. And then we can turn this off so we don't see it. So now both are there, but one we're saving for later. So we can always refer back to it. OK, now, so let's title this our working layer. And let's title this our. Uh, logo okay so this is for the single line logo something like a maker's mark if anyone wants to put engrave on their projects just a little decal a little logo of what they're working on something not too big not too complicated and so if you let's adjust this Pull that in there, cool. And let's pull that into this line. And see, there's nothing here, but because it gets in parallel, the uh, um, snaps pop up. Cool. And we can get it just right. Awesome. So, so now we have the logo that Jake wants to do for his chair. So if we go to outline mode, which is also control Y, it shows what specific vectors we're working on because there's line width and there's stroke, which can get confusing. But 
the only thing that matters to origin is what the actual vectors are. Go, uh, let's go out of that. So if we take this, highlight everything, make this stroke huge, you can go to outline mode and you see it hasn't changed at all. It's just a graphic style that is applied to the vector, but it doesn't actually change the vector. Cool. So this, but this is perfect for the online engrave. And then let's do a night. Actually, let's go back to outline mode. Let's do like a nice little logo around it, a little circle. So we can drag the circle. The purple lines mean that it is square, but we can also drag it out. But if you want to force it, you can hold down shift to keep it square and then hold on alt to keep it in the center. Perfect. Up. And then you can, with also outline mode, you see all the extra stuff that you forgot to delete. Perfect. So, Let's, we can move this around in place. What you can also do is use the align metrics. So we can highlight the engraving, right click and group it, which keeps it all together. It keeps it in place and as one unit. Uh, if you look in the layers, there's the circle, the ellipse, and then the group of the chair. And then if you highlight both of them, the align tools come up up here. And so we can click this and keep it in the center. So if this, so if this is off here, click this, center it, and then vertical align, center that. This works a lot of the time, but also you'll notice that because you have an odd shaped object, there's a difference between mathematical center and uh, visual center. And so sometimes we need to adjust this. Let's bring this down. Because it looks a little low. That looks better. Cool. And now for this logo, let's highlight this. And let's see, we want to make this about two inches. So what we can also do is group this, make a square. A really easy sizing tool is you can make a square, make that two inches by two inches. Cool. Now, if you highlight all three, use the align tool horizontal tool aligned to the left and then to the top. And so then you can deselect the square and shrink that all the way down to two inches. So now we have a perfect two inch circle that we can use for our engraving. Okay, so let's leave that there. We'll lock that. And we'll come back to this later for when we'll save it. And we'll go back to our working layer. Let's get out of outline mode so we can see everything again. And now we want to do an outline cut. So cool, cool. Why are you? Always make sure you can turn it on so you can see it. Okay. So now we're going to take this and then up the stroke weights. So grab this, grab this, and then pump this up. And then we can move these up to fit perfectly. Highlight both of these. 
get them in line. Move that right up to size. Cool. Move that right up to size. And then, so it's perfect that these are in line, so we can just use the stroke weights. Bump those up. Bump that up. And then if you want, we can use the line tool again. Outline the armrest and we can get some really nice custom shapes. So if anyone is using Inkscape or Illustrator, or Illustrator or um, Affinity, most of these tactics apply. Uh, they are generally the same in this basic functionality. The only real difference is the Shape Builder tool on Illustrator is a huge plus. And so if you want that cool tool to build unique shapes, um, also the Image Trace is the where it'll use the algorithm to change a photo into vectors automatically. Uh, th that is worth its weight in gold if that's what you're doing for it. So uh, that's what you're paying for, basically. Look, it, Affinity does most of the job and it looks good and it's pretty easy to use, but uh, Illustrator is solid when you want to edit photos. Cool, cool. Let's drag these in. Drag those in. And now we can, we don't want this stroked. We want this filled. So if you go over to the stroke and fill, you can just hit this swap key and it flips it around. Beautiful. And so now if you see the lines are still lines, what we want to do is highlight them. Go into Object, Path, and then Outline Strokes. And so now this creates a box around the stroke. So see what I was saying of you can go from Online to Outline really easily, but there is no good tactic to go backwards to, to have an Outline and go to Online. That uses some uh, complicated uh, different techniques depending on what you use. And so now we can, let's turn off that. Cool. So we don't need this line. We don't need this line. And we can highlight this all. Shape Builder again. Combine those. Beautiful. Combine those. Combine. We don't want that. Perfect. And then let's also cut off this bottom part. Let's get that little guy. There we go. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Delete that. And then now we have to name it. Let's go back. Put a little stroke on this shaper styles. It, th this little graphic style, if uh, on uh, the forum there's a way to download this, you can have everything that you can refer to it. Uh, this little thing. So just like hit, grab that pocket. Cool. And now everything is color coded correctly to what we want to do. So now we have that perfect outline. And let's see, now we want to put Jake's brand on it. So text. I'm just going to kind of go through this whole text element because there is a lot to learn. And in a couple weeks, it's a deep hole. Uh, in a couple weeks, we're going to do another sessions, which is me and Sean doing a deep dive on everything from text to origin. But uh, 
here, we're just going to do a quick once over of maker text and do the still what L. Oh, oh, th three L's. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the only person that does that. <laughs> I'm sure. Yes. I have been corrected before. And you did it again. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so, I. Uh, okay. Okay. I know it's kind of cheesy, but I always. Uh, I kind of try to highlight the well crafted in the name. And then. And we'll go over a little bit later about how you can do that directly on tool if you so decide to. So there are tons of different fonts we can use, but my go to for this kind of thing is railway, rail, railway thin. It's a super thin font, so you can get by with it just being. An online font with it not like if you can take this guy and then go into create outlines oh let's go let's go back so if you go into oh it doesn't show it but if you were to take it just as a font and put this into illustrator or put this into origin now nothing would pop up it would just be a line so you got the important step is to go to create outlines now this makes the vector shape out of what you can going to cut. So now that we have those, let's bring this down. Let's put a, another cool little circle around that guy. Looks good. Delete that. Let's turn off the picture because we don't need that anymore. That disappears. Cool. Move that over. Got to make this nice and pretty and center. You need a logo as classy as the furniture you're making. If you spend all this time to build a beautiful piece of furniture, you want to put your mark on it. Also, the great part about assist is this whole time while this is being made, I'm making another chair. <laughs> Do all the hard work for you. OK, looks good. So, and let's make this about eight inches. So again, and group all this, make a square. Eight inches, eight inches. Let's drop that around so we can see inside of it. And then, say if we just want to estimate it, we can shrink this down up. That's good. Get rid of that square. Now, let's go into saving. So when you save it, I always like to take it, copy it, and put it into a new file. Because you had all the, all the other stuff. You had the picture. Um, and you can't save that whole file and put that onto the tool because it's a really big file. So this just copies it into a new file. And so it's just your artwork and then you can keep all your other working file in a different cool shrink the artboard to size let's make this and let's ungroup that make this an online cut cool everything looks dandy file save as svg and we want to call this let's see still well logo crafted perfect save that here are all the correct options this is on shaper hub if you want to optimize the saving settings okay and then let's go back to our individual online logo that we had earlier. 
take that, zoom in on that guy, delete this square, I mean, I don't know. make that an online cut. Oh, it's grouped. So make sure everything's ungrouped if you're putting graphic styles onto it because it won't recognize it. It'll add both. Make sure the control shift G, which is ungrouped. It's always good to hit that a bunch of times. Perfect. Control C. We can use the same file, but we're not going to save over it. We're just going to, again, save as. And then we can make this Stillwell logo. Cool. Now we have both those. Now we can go to Shape Rub, go to Create Projects, Upload Files, and we have the two files right there. Click both of them, open, uploaded the tool. That easy. And so now Jake can cut them. And so with assist, with all the cutting, I do this, send you a Shaper Hub project, you copy it to tool and you can get in the workshop. Makes it really easy for you. Let us do the hard work. And if your skills aren't quite there, if you have practice, if you want a little guidance, if you don't know what Origin quite can do and you want to figure it out, send it our way and we can look at it, give you an estimate. My, my files are now in my Origin files. He tossed it into my Shaper Hub, and then there, and they're ready for me to, to grab. So we have my smaller Maker's Mark, and we have my bigger logo. A couple, I might as well pull a big logo for right now. Just kind of pop that down there and talk a little bit about it. So most of this is going to be done as an inside cut. And I'm going to go through a couple of different bits to get it to be just right. I'm going to hog out most of the material with a quarter inch bit. Then I'm going to come in and do the finer details and the tight corners and these skinny straights with a 16th inch bit. When it comes down to the text, I'll just go ahead and put in for right now that I have a 0.06. Pretend like I do for a moment. So it's, we've got a couple options here. I'm going to go inside. I believe. So when I'm cutting the inside with that 16th inch bit, I can control the actual weight of my text by just playing with that offset feature. So if I want it to be as tight and small as the 16th, I can do that in one pass. But say I want to add a little emphasis, for example, to the word crafted or anything, I can essentially make it bold text by just playing with that offset and bringing the line further away from the final design line. And that looks a little bit like this. Wow, that was quick. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. You didn't hear me cutting in the background the whole time? So just for the example, you can tell the first part of the name is slightly thinner, and you can bold using just offsets. This is all done on a piece of, um, I don't know, what was it called? Phenolic covered ply. So it's just ply on the edge, and it has that really nice, beautiful sheen. This is something that go on my shop door or on my desk, whatever it is, just that's my logo now. When it comes to my maker's mark, something that's going to go on the actual pieces of furniture, I'm going to pull up. Oops. I'm going to get rid of this big logo. I'm going to pull up my maker's mark. We're going to cut this a couple times and talk about different engraving styles. So it's a nice size. Just look at the scale for right now. Yeah, two inches by two inches, perfect. And I think that's going to go right on the back stretcher of the chair. And I'm going to pop that down right there. So now you can see it's an online, online cut. I can do it with whatever cutter I want, but I'm going to use first the stock engraver, which is that 60 degree engraving bit. I'll go ahead and hit engrave. Always do your Z touch, hands off the tool, let it do its work. Now, the trick with the engraver is 
your line weight in this case is determined by your depth. The deeper you go, the wider your cut is. I'm just going to stick, and in, in fact, I'm going to go a little shallower. Your normal engraved setting is 0.02. For right now, because I don't want to make that deep of a cut, I'm going to do 0.01 Oops. on my depth. And no offset. Doing this in one shot. Again, all online cuts, so you need to start on one end or the other and just carry it across. Set my speed down a little bit and let's do it. So you can see, as while Jake's cutting, this is a great addition you can put in your pieces. Uh, I know some people who have origin who just use it for Maker's Mark. Um, you can build the chair however you want, but this little additional touch at the end really is a quick way to add a high degree of personalization and craftsmanship to your work. Uh, again, everyone has a logo, but if you don't have one designed specifically to cut this way, uh, it takes a, either a little bit of designing or you can send it our way and we can help get you there. Um, so single line works great for bigger or smaller fonts, everything under a couple inches. And then if you want to do something bigger, that creates a uh, need for an outside line cut. All right. I'm going to pop over here to this camera. Sorry for that. Great size. I like how the engraving looks, but I want to try something else. We got a couple different styles of engravers. This one is very, very tiny. You can see it, it's an eighth inch shank and it's meant to be used with our eighth inch collet. And I'm going to try that because I think it's going to give me a little higher fidelity and possibly tighter lines on certain areas. And then I'm also going to and so I think Ted has the link that he can throw that up of yes. where to buy these. They're pretty cheap, they're good bits, and they create really tight lines. They uh, also come in, typically come in packs like that because they're so sharp and mm -hmm. small and you're going to lose them or you're going to damage them. You've got a whole bunch of them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I recommend these to a lot of assist customers that if they want to cut something small and you want a really high degree of fidelity, you want a really sharp line, like these are wonderful bits. And they're multiple, so in case you break them, there's extras. Yeah. It's always good to have extra bits. Swap out that color. I do love, especially when doing fine detail stuff, all the, the, the range of eighth inch bits that are out there for really particular materials, too. Like I've used a bit that's specifically for cutting shell. Oh. All right, got that. I'm going to re-Z touch, but I'm not going to bother changing my bit size, really just because it's an online cut in this case. And it's so sharp that I actually want to keep a close eye on the tool and when it comes in contact with the surface. So it might dig into it a little bit. All right. We're going to play around with our different depths because, again, the deeper we go, the wider the kerf of the cut is going to be. I'm going to go ahead and copy that same thing, bring it right on over, and do a quick pass on this. And so with bits this small, it is possible to break them if you're in a harder material or you're going too fast. Uh, with this lighter ply, it's not really an issue. But if you are cutting with them, you can set your plunge rate and your auto feed rate to about 5. And uh, that will allow Origin to regulate the speed so you don't go too quick. Uh, so that's always use it to slow you down. Because it's really easy to push across this really fast because there isn't a lot of material it's removing, but that auto speed keeps you safe. Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> a pro user right there. Right to the line. All right. I'm going to grab the vacuum. Because it's a longer pitch on the cutter, it's stuck down in there. But I am really happy with how tight that is. And it brought really brought out the definition in those three lines that come down through. Can you bring the camera a little closer? Okay. Still got some. Beautiful. Still got some dust in there. But I want to customize this for the particular piece that I'm putting it on. I'm going to put a quick on tool number just below it using the text tool. So hop into text on the create tab. You know where it lives. We'll do kind of the classic abbreviation for number. Make that. No. Uh, no, let's do point 0.2 inches tall. Place it right below. And let's say this is the 35th one that I've ever made. Now you've been busy. <laughs> There's a lot of cutting. It's a lot of weaving. <laughs> uh, I'm going to make that a little taller, just for fun. And right now, I'm just visually lining it up. But if I wanted to be bang on, I would have made a, I would have made a grid prior. So now I can cut that out, and it just makes it a personalized piece for this particular chair. So you see how the width of the cut is dependent on the angle of the cutter. And so we could probably make this even smaller. We could probably go to half this size yeah. with the micro engraving bit. Absolutely. But once you go smaller with the stock cutter, all these lines will start to uh, run into each other and blow each other out. And so you can only really go so tight with the stock cutter. It's great, but if you want to do really tight, detailed stuff, micro engraving bits are essential. I want to thank everyone for joining us. It's been a pleasure and happy making.